I'm, I'm really excited to speak to such a wonderful group of folks that are actively designing and building the future. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm particularly excited because the entire landscape of business, the entire landscape of mobility, the, in, the entire landscape of innovation is changing rapidly. But the changes are also coming about because of less than positive things. There's, there's a lot of disruption. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. There's a lot of things that are affecting, affecting our operations, everything from Brexit to the instability of the EU to the political gridlock and dysfunction in the US to the refugee crisis to terrorism and, and many, many other things. Now, we could look at all these changes and we can allow them to let us shrink, to become more conservative in our approaches. Or we can see them as opportunities. We need to realize that taking an envirom environmentally sustainable approach to things, protecting our environment, does not come at a cost of our, our operations, at a cost of our business. They can be very complementary. We can create new products, we can create new services, we can create new innovations, and we can do that in an environmentally friendly way. That first day in space, the most remarkable, the most memorable moment was when I got to look out the window for the first time. When all my tests were over, I got to unstrap and float over to a window and take a look at our, at our planet. It was just absolutely breathtaking. And I remember the first thing that hit me was just how unbelievably thin the atmosphere appeared from that vantage point. As what I experienced in space was a profound sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the opportunity to see the planet from that perspective and gratitude for the planet that we've been given. And in some way that I, I can't fully explain, being physically detached from the Earth made me feel deeply interconnected with everyone on it. From space, I was able to look back and see what we have always been, one single human family with a common origin, and now I had a very deep understanding of our shared future. And this is an understanding that I did not always have. We need to build a future that is based on the image of Earthrise, and a foundational piece of building that future is mobility. And decisions that we're making right now concerning mobility have the incredible power to either destroy our world by clinging to the two-dimensional model at all costs, or to help save our planet by embracing the images of Earthrise. So what's the path forward? To illustrate the path forward, let me take you back to space. So on, during my six-month mission, I got into a routine where I would almost say goodnight to the Earth. When all my tasks were over and it was time to get ready for bed, I'd go to the cupola, which is this windowed observatory on the bottom of the space station, and I would just gaze at the Earth for a little while. And as I would gaze at the Earth, I would be routinely hit in the gut with the sobering contradiction between the beauty of our planet on one hand and the suffering that exists on our planet. For instance, in every city in the world, people die in automobile accidents every single day. It's become so commonplace that it barely gets mentioned on the news. It has become the accepted price to pay for our mobility. But when we look at this situation from the orbital perspective, when we zoom out, we realize that on average, one point, around 1.3 million people are killed every year in traffic fatalities. That's equivalent to the population of Munich. But we also have to realize that it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be this way. We have the power to change it. Now, I launched into space with a belief that we already right now have all the technology, all the resources necessary to solve many, if not all, the problems facing our planet. So I spent a good bit of my time earth-gazing, pondering the question, if this is true, why do we still face so many problems and issues? And starting from a foundation of awe and wonder, we realize the certainty that, that nothing is impossible. It is, it is possible to reduce traffic fatalities in our mobility systems. In fact, it's possible to reduce it to zero. And once we stop designing cars with all the armor in it, once we stop designing automobiles that are designed to survive crashes and design automobiles that don't crash in the first place, that's going to put us on a much better environmental track. And once we eliminate traffic jams by things like smart roadways or hopefully no roadways, I think we are going to be on a much better, better environmental track. And just to wrap this up, I want to talk about 
when I had the opportunity to return to Earth after my six-month mission was over. But eventually, the capsule rested on its side, and now my window was pointed down at the ground. And out of my window, I saw a rock, a flower, and a blade of grass. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm home. And what was really interesting about that thought is I was home, but I was in Kazakhstan. And so to me at that moment, my home wasn't just Houston, Texas, where at the time I lived with my family. My home was Earth. Now, as I said, I think mobility is a, an important tool, a foundational tool in building our future. So I want to thank all of you for all that you're doing and all that you will do to help make life on our planet as beautiful as our planet looks from space. We don't have to accept the status quo on our planet. And by taking, you don't have to be in orbit to have the orbital perspective. And so with that, I, I thank you all.